Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode we're going to launch some satellites over to the moon to fulfill contracts uh, with specific orbit requirements. The first one we're going to do is one with a high apoapsis and periapsis which I think will be easier to get into without any problems. And I've created a revamped stalwart, uh, a payload stalwart so it doesn't have the limit of a thrust weight ratio of four and I'll show you what that entails in a second. First of all I've increased the size of this little part here the one that actually gets into orbit around the moon and one benefit is that uh, we've added some solar panel re. instead of just having two we have four and I think that should make it once once this core gets into low power mode this should be stable. It shouldn't be just a 14 day duration. It can actually stay powered indefinitely uh, while it's in time warp, while it's in low power mode. In fact, even with low, uh, fewer solar panels it could do that, but this is safer. So I've decided that that would be a good thing and that's because it'll provide permanent communication support for other missions. And since we're putting it into a relatively high orbit, that's going to be a good thing. Still got the instruments there, but no goo container this time. It's got about 1,100 meters per second to work with on those RCS thrusters. And I know I can, I, I guess I can configure this custom window editor. I guess I, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. But I don't usually like to add the delta V of the RCS here because we need the RCS to maneuver as well. We don't have a reaction wheel or anything. So yeah, it's not good to add the delta V from the RCS system into your general calculations under normal circumstances. So I have to be careful with that. But uh, Delta V stats here, and uh, I guess vessel RCS Delta V. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> um, oh, well, that's because the tank is unlocked. Oh no, the tank is unlocked. Hmm. Well, for those who mentioned in the comments that I could add RCS Delta V to the stats. Actually not. <laughs> Actually no, that it doesn't work. Uh, it, this is configured for um, hydrazine, so yeah, it's just not working right. Go figure, Mechjeb can't do that. Okay. <laughs> Does it work with anything? No. Nope. Well, probably safer that way. Anyway, uh, going on down here, uh, this looks roughly the same, except at the bottom here you'll notice we have five aerobees now, and that's because I didn't like the idea of having the single error be burn for a duration longer than the state burn time which is two minutes and five seconds. Uh, so these are XASRs, they should be all configured to XASR and they will provide the initial push to the moon and then the RCS system on the stage will complete that. Okay, uh, next stage is a shortened RD0105 stage. We don't have the tech for the 0109 yet, so this is the best engine we've got for vacuum. 316 vacuum ISP is better than anything we've got. And But I've shortened it to 4 minutes and 30 seconds because the 5 minutes and 30 seconds was pushing it. Now I've unlocked some engines. You can see I unlocked the R7 core and booster engine. I've actually put the R7 booster engine at the core here because it's got the better thrust and frankly uh, the 306 versus 308 on the vacuum ISP isn't that big a deal. Uh, we need the thrust more than anything else to get off the ground nice and quick and um, also at the right form factor 2.7 meters the core is actually uh, 3 meters now. Uh, we put the this guidance unit here which can handle 300 tons instead of having little guidance units on the on the outer pods and because of the increased efficiency provided by the R7 booster engine we could get rid of the Vanguard Vanguard stage in fact there is no configuration of this I think that the Vanguard stage will be of any help so there we have that now the the boosters are actually this one. Uh, currently the stats are exactly the same as for this one, this RL, uh, LR89, sorry. LR89, so uh, the actual performance hasn't changed on those uh, side boosters, but changing it to this one allows us to upgrade directly to the different engines, the H1 and the RS27. 
Now, you might wonder why I didn't use the R7 booster engines on the outside as well. First of all, um, they're huge, 2.7 meters instead of the 1 meter form factor for these booster engines. Um, I could have used the core engine here, which is only 2 meters, as booster engines. It has relatively the same performance as that. However, the vectoring range on the gimbal is only 1.5 degrees. This one has 10 degrees. So I liked that. I wanted gimbling. So, and, and you know, uh, we'll have very little gimbling when we get to this core stage here once the boosters drop off, but by that time we're through the atmosphere and it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, at least that's the theory. It could go horribly wrong, of course. That's part of the business. But the net benefit of having the stalwart P is that it's cheaper. We dumped the entire Vanguard stage, which had two extra engines on it, and so now this is a cheaper rocket. The downside is that by dumping the Vanguard stage, we now hit a higher thrust weight ratio because the upper stages are not as heavy. I've got a spare solar panel sitting there. Now, we are going to unlock improved instrumentation soon, and that might provide some additional stuff that we might want on this payload. We'll see about that. I have uh, now decided to run this under OpenGL mode instead of DirectX 11 after upgrading my drivers. So I think that'll work better. We have more room in the RAM space. It's running at 2.45 gigabytes right now. And so I'll probably be able to record longer stretches of gameplay without the game crashing, which is always nice. Okay, let's build one of these and see what else is going on. Right, so improved instrumentation. This Lunar Goo on the original Stalwart, I think we're just gonna keep that in reserve for now. We could launch it we could launch it in a pinch, but we could use that Stalwart to launch the mission to Mars as well. So we can edit that and put that payload on. Let's see what we get from improved instrumentation. Okay, improved instrumentation is down here. We got uh, another solar panel. I don't know how much better it is then this solar panel, this says, yeah, it's actually double the the charge rate. Same size it looks like, right? Yeah, it's same size. So we should replace the solar panels on the probe. Because this will be much better. Uh, these are other experiments, I think. We could put those on. That would be interesting. That's not an RP0. These are... Not even supposed to be in here. Oh, and the uh, better antenna is right... Oh, we have a... Well, that's only moon range still. That's not good enough for... Yeah, that's not good enough for uh, Mars or Venus. Better probe core. Hmm. Okay, let me... Let me bring... Let me bring in the one that's currently building on the stalwart and see... Or maybe the Stalwart P. Let me uh, mess with that one first, uh, the, the the one on the Stalwart P that I just showed you, and see if this Ranger Block 1 core can make a difference. I think it can. I think this will be much better. This and those solar panels will probably, probably be very good. Hmm, you know what? I think this just makes the whole thing heavier. The core is a little bit heavier. It's 0 0.08 versus 0 0.05. It can carry 0 0.05 more tons, which means a net benefit of 0 0.02, which isn't much. And then you end up building something that's uh, 0 0.05 tons heavier, 50 kilograms heavier, and uh, turns out the Delta V isn't all that great. The solar panels, you know, uh, I could place them a little bit better. I haven't even put the antennae and and uh, instruments on. If we uh, test with a 1 kN thruster, which is a pretty standard way to go because obviously we can't get the delta V readings from the RCS, um, what we see is that it has 1,191 meters per second. Uh, with the other one I was expecting about 1,100 and that was with less mass. Of course that had 0.2 tons of mass instead of 0.25. So yeah, I think I'll replace the solar panels on the other one, but I think this Ranger Block 1 core is a bit overrated. 
Yep. Ooh, I just noticed something else. Um, these solar panels that we just picked up are a lot cheaper than these. These are 300 each. These are 50 each. So not only do I get to put half as many, but they're cheaper. So in fact, the benefit is like a tenfold, more than tenfold, like twelvefold improvement in cost. So that's going to be good. Not much in mass because they're very, very, very light in the first place, but in cost is going to be a huge benefit. Okay, well, uh, with the fewer solar panels and cheaper solar panels, this has become a much cheaper launch and uh, will take less time to build too, so that's all good. Maybe we should change the other one too. Uh, and we could remove the goo container from the other one and get it all suited up so that it can launch sooner and we'll probably use it instead of keeping it in reserve. Alright, let me package this up. Okay, so on this one, I've taken off the goo container. We won't change the name just for just for not actually confusing the matter. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it increased the build time because these panels have to be redone anyway. So these are the new panels. And it's cheaper overall, but I think we've already built some stuff, I think is the problem. Anyway, uh, so anyway, this portion will have more Delta V. And that's a good thing because we took off the goo container. And I've also added more hydrazine here and cut down on the fuel for the XASR. The rest of the rocket I've left untouched, so this is still the standard old stalwart. Okay, so I'm gonna package this up if it'll let me, and then we'll we'll probably launch this first. Okay, let's roll that one out, and we've got 45 more days until the one on the stalwart P finishes. And all the proceeds of these missions will go to getting more upgrade points and spending them on R&D so that we can get this electrics unlocked faster because right now we'll only have 10 days before the Mars transfer uh, point. So that's not good enough. All right, see you on the launch pad. Here we go, ignition. And launch. We've got the nice high thrust weight, initial thrust weight ratio with this rocket, 1.5. I've retained that with the stalwart P as well. Okay, looking good. Past the speed of sound now. Okay, I'm trying a slightly lower than usual pitch at this point. In the hope of not getting too high in orbit, but it's a little bit dicey. Booster set. Okay, booster separation is good. Rocket continues. A little less than two more minutes on this stage. Thrust weight ratio will be a little bit low, which is why we usually aim higher. And then of course you've got the Vanguard and the five and a half minute RD0105 stage. Okay, here we go, 10 seconds. We're already a little bit, well, we're already way high. I've, I've made a mistake here somewhere. And no, we can't transfer directly to the moon, I checked. Okay, separation. And ignition. Okay, both vanguards look good. And fairing separation. Fairings are off. Can switch back to Smart ASS, I think. Yep, I'm definitely having an off day as far as trajectories are concerned. We're not gonna even make it to Apoapsis. Well, we might make it to Apoapsis during the third stage. But certainly, that's way too much time left over. Separation. Okay, and final stage, 5 minutes and 30 seconds, we'll keep it flat. Alright, coming close to the end of this burn, uh, sorry for the sloppiness. 
This is really sloppy. Well, we might as well try and leave at least one end low. Okay, that'll do. So, yeah, lopsided orbit. Not very nice. But, uh, let's lock the hydrazine here. And make sure that's locked as well. So that when we turn on the RCS thrusters to maneuver, it will only use it from that tank. And now to plot for the moon. Now, one of the benefits of changing up this stage is that I only need to make sure I use 2,998 meters per second instead of what I was using before. The rest will be all RCS. So that means that I don't have to do so much fine tuning uh, as I did before and overburning. Okay, so let me w see what I can do. Well, we can see the target orbits pretty clearly here. And looking at where the periapsis is, I think we can get it so that we're still still visible to Earth at that point. Uh, it might be a little bit hidden, but it won't be too far off. But anyway, uh, it's time for some precise maneuver node tweaking. So I'll bring up maneuver, maneuver node editor from MechJeb and see what I can do here. Okay, well, KSP is not doing me any favors. Every time I try and change things even a little bit, uh, the orbit tends to fade out, so that's not very helpful. And, yeah, it's an awkward approach, but I think if I can do the burn here, get into orbit here, and correct the inclination at the same time, that point looks like it's definitely in communication with Earth. So that's my goal here. All right, so we'll have to do 2,998 with the with the XASR, and then another 59 or so with the RCS system. And I think that should be doable on this portion, the RCS system on this portion, and then the upper portion will have to do the combined burns. I I tried plotting here to see how much it would cost to get into orbit and fix the inclination right here, but the orbit kept disappearing, so I couldn't do that. Oop, this seems to be... Oh, uh, there's the stage destroyed stuff. Okay, let's clear all this up. Okay, so let's try this out. Okay, that looks about right. Good. I'm gonna unlock this one. Okay. Thrusting forward. Okay, separation. And ignition. Okie dokie, here we go. Okay, we're about to run out on the XASR, the Araby Sustainer configuration. And after that, we are going to burn the remaining, it looks like 80 meters per second, using RCS. And hopefully there'll be enough hydrazine for that. Okay, here we go. 90 meters per second even. Okay. Okay, we have a moon encounter of some sort. Not quite the one we want, but you can see it approaching there. Coming in from the wrong side here. We need it retrograde. We need it going around this way. The target PE and AP are around 1,400 kilometers. So we'll want to see this PE about 1,400. Here we go, it's gonna flip around. And it starts disappearing on me. <sighs> Just can't get good help these days. Okay. We'll say somewhere around there. Jeez. I wasn't joking. It just doesn't doesn't like me sometimes. Okay, so that's settled. Now, uh, let's go to find controls and go north-south to get some solar rays once the sun comes up. 
Okay, we have sunrise, but energy generation is not as high as I thought it would be. Uh, let's face the sun proper. Hmm. Yeah, I thought we would be cleanly getting more input than we needed, but it doesn't seem like it. Now on time warp, the upper core is going to produce less drains, so it'll be alright. Here we go. See? All nice and good, but that wasn't what I was planning for. I was planning for it to be alright all around. Okay, we are now in the moon's SOI. Mm, and here is the point I was looking for. It's not quite visible. We'll have to start... Oh no, that's not quite the point. Uh, hold on. Well, that'll be a start. 1,100 was what we had, though. So this is pretty darn close. We will use the RCS on the stage we're dumping this time. As many suggested. Would be helpful if we could spot where Earth is during this. Okay, there it is. Moon's just barely threatening to cover it. Okay. Let's have RCS turn to the target. And we can take caps lock off now. Okay, expanding the RCS on the blue stage. Okay, about to run out of the RCS on the blue stage. We're, we're also very close to losing communication with Earth, so this is a little bit dodgy. Okay, right, so separation, and unlock, and continue uh, with delay. Mm. What's gone wrong? No, oh, didn't unlock it. Ha, okay, there we go. Well, as long as we get into orbit, we can go around and do this again right here. We're pointing right at the sun, so it's not the orientation we want to end up at. Not if we want this portion to survive and continue providing communication help. So yeah, even with the expanded amount of hydrazine on the blue stage, it didn't give us more than about a hundred meters per second after doing the adjustments to get into the right trajectory. Earth is very much on the horizon there and we are approaching orbit but not quite there yet. Now we are in orbit according to according to the map view. Still got a lot of work to do to adjust our orbit to the correct target orbit, though. But maybe this is not the time to do that anymore. Earth is passing behind the moon, and maybe we should we, we should orient to the sun before it does, so that we can recharge. Oh. Uh, we've lost connection, but I don't understand why the solar panels are broken. Ah, oh, how did they get broken? Dang it. The, this can't replenish its charge. The solar panels are broken, and its orbital period is too long. Once we get connection, we're going to have to fix things. Jeez. I have no idea how the solar panels got broken. No wonder we weren't getting as much electric charge as I thought we should be. Um, why are these broken? But the other portion, let me just check. Switch to. Are these broken as well? Yeah, obviously not. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had electric charge. All of these are fine. 
all of those are fine. It's just the one that we would like to have work isn't. Okay, well, this is a problem. Let's just get on with it. Uh, let's wait until we get communication again. I have to bring the orbit down. Even if we can't adjust the inclination right now. Okay, here we go. And as long as the orbital period's below a day, I think we're fine and we can figure the rest out afterwards. Okay, that's done. Let me plot for the adjustment. Looks like we need about 700 and a little more after that. Not great, honestly. Periapsis does not seem to be going right where I want it to. It's a little bit confusing. Inclination keeps going up. I don't actually want it to go any higher. I mean, we are way off from where I actually want to do this maneuver. Maybe time to rethink this. How about a maneuver out here instead? And then something to pull the orbit down there? It's better to combine them, I know. But we have a lot of radial components. Alright, so let's try this adjustment here and then we'll bring the orbit down at periapsis and see how close we get. At least we'll be at the right inclination. Actually, I think uh, what we're adjusting is our, our longitude of ascending node more than our inclination at this point. No, I, I still don't think I can get it there. Close. Closer. But we're not going to be able to bring the apoapsis down. Let's pretend this is close enough, maybe. Uh, we don't have much hydrazine left. Let's see how low we can bring the apoapsis. Um, this seems to be close to their usual fudge factor. Let's just plot a maneuver there, get to it, and bring the orbit down. I wonder if the system would will even concede that this was an attempt to get electrical power says it can generate power but we're not actually generating power right now so even if I did get this in the correct orbit there's a possibility that because these solar panels are broken wait well, now they say direct sunlight but there's no energy flow there's no actual solar input Hmm. stranger and stranger as if I didn't already have a mystery and uh, they're giving me another mystery Oh, it is, it is generating power. I thought you said you were broken. Well, something is generating power. These still say energy flow zero. Okay, well, I don't think uh, we're going to get it fairly low. I don't know. It needs to be basically circular. Okay, well... Yeah, we're way off from our target. Uh, as far as inclination is concerned, 1.3 degrees off. Uh, as far as the longitude of ascending node, just about 1 degree off. But about a thousand kilometers off of the apoapsis or periapsis. Okay, well, I guess all I can do is go back to the VAB and rethink things. Now it has to be said, the stalwart P doesn't actually involve more delta V than what we just saw. In fact, it has less. So the the bright side is that we won't be leaving as much on the table. In other words, in the third stage, if you remember the RD0105 still had hundreds of meters per second of delta V left over. Uh, this configuration doesn't have as much left over. But the main goal of the stalwart P is to be cheaper, not uh, to be more replete with delta V. So it'll be a different configuration to get more delta V out of the situation. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a restartable engine like the uh, of the class of the RD0105. I suppose to make myself feel better I could uh I could spend some money. Let's see. Let's let's just go down. I'll I'll risk going down to 700,000 funds and increase our science 
Okay. Well, what does that do for us? 235 days. So we'll have 40 days to figure out our Mars mission. That That's probably enough if we rush it. Okay, but uh, on closing, let me try and build a new rocket that really has a lot more delta V. I'm talking like 15,000 meters per second plus so that we can definitely do the mission. And then we'll start off with that next time. So I'll leave you with some hope for the future here. All right, so let me spend some time on that. Okay, behold the Colossus. And the reason for the name will become apparent in a moment, but let's start from the top and work our way down, taking things apart. And I promised 15,000 meters per second, and I have delivered actually. The probe itself, which is right here, is just like the previous one. It's got a little half dome of hydrazine there, and altogether it has 1,000 meters per second, so 14,000 plus its little RCS uh, delta V is 15,000. All right, and I decided to use the Ranger Mark 1 here, and we'll see how that works out. The next stage is actually nine one kilonewton thrusters, and the reason I picked them, even though they're not very efficient at the moment and burning hydrazine, is of course because uh, we will be able to restart them, which is essential to my plans. So that's what we have there, and the power situation is okay. Uh, if either side is facing the sun, it should be able to replenish the charge reasonably well, but uh, even if it doesn't, it'll be able to hold out until our mission is done. Uh, this, this portion has trouble uh, reconnecting back. Let's see. Did I get that right? No, I didn't. Okay, don't worry. I've saved it. Let's just move on. Otherwise, I'll take too much time. Okay, here we have the the RD0105 and it is going to burn for 5 minutes and 45 seconds and it's going to start our journey to the moon. So it's no longer a finishing orbit. It is actually the start of lunar transfer and then the 9 1 kilonewton thrusters will finish lunar transfer. This will give the 2531 you see here and then we'll expect about 500 to 600 from these 1 kilonewton thrusters. Then the 1 kilonewton thrusters will get us into orbit around the moon and then we will make all the adjustments we need to get into the proper proper orbit. So that's the plan, which means that the rest of this rocket has to get us to orbit. That's going to be a little bit tricky. It's a little bit close right now. We, we've got about 9,400 to 9,500 meters per second. Uh, and uh, here we have an LR-105 sustainer. So this is actually the center engine on the Atlas rocket and I've unlocked it for this purpose so well uh, we can uh, I don't know maybe we'll, we'll put it over here for now uh, and the reason I chose it is because it's got 309 vacuum ISP but also a high thrust right we can't use the RD0105 uh, here because obviously not enough thrust so it has a sufficient thrust not really I would like a little bit more but uh, I, there is no other configuration for it only... Uh, well, it, they do have these other configurations for it, sorry. Um, I don't have any configuration for it right now, except for this one. So anyway, it's there. It's going to burn for about six minutes, and uh, then it's going to hopefully be in orbit. Okay, uh, working our way down, you'll notice there is a controller here, it can handle 120 tons and then we have another one of those there so the center core can handle 240 tons even though it's 167. The center engine at the bottom here is uh, LR87 booster, that's one of these. The problem is that uh, it's got all these variants already unlocked. Uh, I've been a nice person and it, it, you know it is RP0 compatible according to this I think uh, but I've been a nice person and I've stuck to this variant here, which should be reasonable. I mean, it's got uh, 243 sea level, 296 vacuum. Actually, uh, this first variant has a better sea level. It's got 256 sea level, I think, and 290 vacuum, according to this. Uh, but I needed the extra thrust. You can see the Dash 5 version has 2,108 thrust, and this has 1,466 so that's why I opted for that version and the reason it has the extra thrust by the way is because it burns aerosene and nitrogen tetroxide so that's our fuel the version that has less thrust but better ISP 
burns kerosene and oxygen. So, yep, that's the burn here, and I've tried to be nice about it. Uh, I could have used uh, the better variants. It was very tempting. There's even a Hydrolox thing there, but no, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be good. Okay, uh, the boosters on the outside. Oh, by the way, um, you might wonder why I didn't use the R7, even though I've unlocked both. Um, first of all, I thought about using the core engine up here, uh, there. But there is a problem. It doesn't have a bottom node. Uh, this is an uh, engineering defect, clearly. Uh, and same problem with the booster engine. And obviously uh, I couldn't put these at the bottom of the core stage because they didn't have enough thrust. We would need two of these, uh, two to three of these, and there's just not enough space. Uh, the booster engines here are the LR89s, uh, so it's uh, this one. I get this one and this one mixed up fairly often. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's this one, and they're just going to burn for a minute and 40 seconds. Uh, it, it's exactly the same kind of booster we had on the Stalwart, except we have eight of them now, which may case cause chaos. I don't know how separation is going to work out. Maybe dangerous, maybe all right. Now, something I have to note is only the booster's light initially. That's going to also be a potential problem. So the booster is light and the center engine lights at altitude. It doesn't light on the ground. So uh, actually just a few seconds before booster separation, it will light and then proceed onward. And that's how the staging is working here. Uh, again, we'll see how that works out. Suspense for the next episode. I'm not going to launch this this time because I'm, I'm out of time. And we'll have to see in the next episode how it all works out and I'm in as much suspense as you are but yeah I think that's all of the key points spoken for obviously I couldn't fit the larger engines on the boosters because stuff wouldn't fit and uh, if I had only four boosters I wouldn't get enough thrust I considered using four of these but that got a little bit unwieldy so yep yeah, this is how it is Alright, so look forward to this next time. This is our hope for the future. And yeah, we will try launching a satellite on it. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.